Thank you for watching the news on Times TV with me, Chawes Banda. First, the headlines. Distribution of the 192 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines to district hospitals across the country to start next week. This year's Independence Day celebrations chairperson says funds that were unused in organizing the event will be returned to account number one. And in other news, a Form 4 dropout called in Kosi has made a mini hydropower plant. We have these and other stories. Please stay with us. Now the news in detail. Deputy Minister of Health Chris C. Kalamula Kanyashu says distribution of the 192,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines to district hospitals across the country will start next week. Malawi has received the much-awaited vaccines through the Kamuz International Airport in Nilongwe on Saturday. Blessings, Binganjira reports. Deputy Minister of Health Chris Kalamula Kanyashu says Malawi is expected to get the next batch of 120,000 of AstraZeneca vaccine from the United Kingdom in the next two weeks. She says her ministry will distribute the vaccines immediately to district hospitals across the country. Kanyasho emphasized that the frontline health workers, the elderly above 60 years, those with underlying health conditions and those who are due for the second dose will be the first priority. As you've seen, the vaccines have arrived in Malawi. Next week, the distribution of vaccines will be in full force to all district hospitals so that all Malawians uh, should uh, get uh, the vaccines. European Union Head of Cooperation in Malawi, Ivo Hofkens, expressed optimism that the vaccine will go a long way in protecting lives of Malawians. This is uh, the, the result of a decision of the European Union uh, leaders of government and, and uh, heads of state last May to start sharing uh, the surplus of vaccines that we that we have in Europe. So France is here the first one uh, that shares uh, the, the vaccines they have and uh, well that's the start of, of what we're doing also the support through COVAX. Um, this is of course also in the interest of Europe as it has often been said Nobody is safe until everybody is safe. So our support to Malawi is also in our own interest. Currently, 382,000 people have received the COVID-19 vaccine and 1,439 people have died. Chairperson for this year's Independence Day celebrations, Richard Chimendobanda, says the funds that remain from the organization of this year's event will be returned to account number one. This follows revelations that over 238 million kwacha was transferred into the Secretary to the President and Cabinet's account for the event. Chimendo Banda says that the full expenditure report for the event will be released next week, Wednesday. He was speaking on Saturday at a news conference in Lilongwe. Rebecca Chimjeka has compiled this report, read by Mande Pondani. According to Shimundo Banda, the total cost for the whole Independence Day celebration expenditure is 87 million kwacha out of 243 million kwacha that was initially budgeted for for the celebrations. Shimundo says government has managed to save 156 million kwacha that will be retained to account number one. Banda clarified that the 238 million did not go into personal account of the Secretary for the President and Cabinet, Zangazanga Chikosi, as some people may think. He said the funds went into the office of the President and Cabinet bank account. The whole amount of expenditure for the celebrations is 87 million, 86,097 kwacha 50 tambara. I will repeat that. 87 million, 86,097 kwacha 50 tambara. That's saving about 156 million from the intended 243 million. We had intended to use 243 million. The celebrations were commemorated through a national service of worship in Nilongwe, which was presided over by President Lazarus Chagwera. 
The African Institute for Development Policy, AFIDEP, has congratulated government for passing the Constitutional and Parliamentary Service Amendment Bill. AFIDEP Executive Director Elia Zulu says the bill will enhance Parliament's independence in discharging its core functions in oversight, legislation and representation. Blessings in Pinganjira has the details. According to AFIDEP Executive Director Elia Zulu, the constitutional reforms are the future of the country. He says AFIDEP played a key role in drafting and advocating for the amendment bill. Speaker of the National Assembly, Catherine Gutanihara, says since 2017, AFIDEP has supported parliament anatomy. The new constitutional amendment will strengthen parliament as an institution to effectively perform its political functions and enhance transparency and accountability. It was passed during the just-ended sitting of parliament. The Malawi Law Society has expressed worry over the slow pace at which the 2.4 billion Kwacha Kashkid case is progressing. Malawi Law Society President Patrick Impaka was reacting to developments that the, that the judiciary is yet to identify a judge to handle the Kashkid case involving former budget director Pompeo and others. Supreme Court and High Court Registrar Gladys, Gan Gladys Gondwe disclosed this in an interview with Times. The Grasha Simana has compiled this report read by Blessings Mpinganjira. Former budget director Pompeo and eight and others are answering a 2.4 billion kwacha cash get case. The case commenced in 2015 and Justice S. Mechombo handled it until June this year when her tenure of office came to an end. The case has now taken over five years. Jombo referred the case to the judge president for direction. But Supreme and High Court Registrar Gladys Gondwe says no judge has been identified yet to take the case. Gondwe says a judge may be identified by the end of next week. Before she retired, the accused challenged Justice Chombo to rescue herself from the court, but she dismissed the application in May this year. President Elaza Chagwela has since appointed Chombo to democratic mission. A Form 4 dropout called Nkosi from Bondera Nyurenda village in the area of traditional authority Kampingo Swande in Mzimba has made a mini hydropower plant which is generating between 250 to 300 volts of electricity. Named after the river that passes along the village, Kasangazi Hydropower generates power using water gravity that goes through pipes from a dam he dug from the river. Sam Kalimira explains in this ex exclusive report. Nkosi, whose house recently caught fire due to high voltage, used maize mill motor planted at the power station a kilometer from his house down the river, said he is happy that his dream is coming to pass after connecting 28 houses with electricity. This is uh, the main source of power, which is generating 2050 to 300 volts supplying to 28 houses. However, of course he said his power station can generate close to a megawatt of power and can supply to over 900 houses. He then asked the government and well wishers to support him to further his education so that he improves the hydro power system. <laughs> We do not have standard poles and a powerhouse. We also use substandard wires which affect the operation. The local generated power is currently supplied to Kasangazi Primary School and according to the head teacher for the school, Chanduwira Chavinga, teachers teach standard 8 learners even during odd hours. But Minister of Energy, Newton Kambala, who visited the system, said as an engineer, he has observed that Kasangazi, mean hydropower, is able to generate 30 kilowatts. Gambara said the government has plans to support the local grid to cover areas where the main grid of electricity supply cooperation of Malawi is not covering. One of the reasons why we came here as government is also to make sure uh, that the systems that we hear about are safe uh, for people uh, that are using uh, the systems.
We would like to uh, promise here that as government to make sure uh, that we participate in this initiative to make sure that we uh, improve uh, what we have seen. Meanwhile, a 200 million Jersey Community Hydroelectric Power Project has stored in Inkarabe Northwest constituency due to resources constraints. Executive Director Hastings Mukandavire pleaded with Kambala to support the community, saying once it is completed, it will connect 240 houses, three primary schools, and one maize mill. We expect more than 100 uh, million uh, kwasha for the project to be completed, but uh, uh, what we have raised so far is uh, less than a quarter. We have only raised about uh, 20 million, so we still have a long way to go for us to complete our project. Malawi has only 11% of people who are connected to the ESCOM grid and 18% of those who are using solar power. You're watching the news on Times TV. We'll be back shortly after this break. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From packets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Muntu mozi paika, sanga mange mozi. Koma, antu wangapo, kubwela pa mozi, timati uu nde mozi. Pa mozi, tilindi kutekela kubwela sa jitu kuko mdela lato. Network yatu ya atu ya jimalawi, ya TNL, ya kalai kutandiza madela ambiri, mwenjira zosi ya nasiana. Koma no palu, TNL, ikufuna kupiti tiza nchito hoi, mwagwiri za nandife eni ake ya mozi. Ndinkani ya bwireta, TNM, Muzi watu. Muga kukwiti sanchito TNM, puimba foni, kutumiza ma SMS, kukwiti sanchito internet, kapena kukwiti sanchito mbamba, chaka jiri jones TNM, izibreka 1%, kapena 1 kwaja, pa 100 kwaja, ili yonse ya ndala mazumu ya panga, kuti tandizire pa jitu kuko, jomwe antu wako funa mdela lao. Tika buwela pa muzi, ndi kukwiti sanaji muzi, tikunza kupanga zazi kulu muzi watu. TNM, muzi watu. Umozi umozi, unamanga ntolo. Ndondo meko, zeta tatidwa. Welcome back to the news. Authority, education authorities in Mzimba North have condemned the tendency of using learners to work in school fields as a fundraising initiative for schools. They are calling it modernized child labor. Mzimba North Chief Education Officer Ernest Chira said it has become a, mo a norm for some schools to use learners from senior classes to do piecework to raise funds for schools to buy some necessities in their schools. Sam Kalimira has the details. Chirwa sounded the warning after member parliament from Mzimba North, Yamiya Jihana, raised an alarm on the practice which, according to the MP, is common in schools from remote areas. Chirwa said learners are allowed to work at the schools, such as screening at the campus, digging latrines and other small activities, but not working in the fields or doing any other hard work. He said schools should find other means of sourcing funds by engaging communities and not sending learners to do piecework for school. Any learner should not be used uh, to do some piecework for the sake of raising money uh, for the school. Uh, this, uh, I think uh, this is the 
this is quite common uh, in most of the schools that people do it uh, do this type of practice ignorantly so we're trying to actually advise them and warn them to say this is not good let's uh, let's not do it uh, let's just focus on the work that is supposed to be done by the learners and not to raise any funds uh, for the school uh, using the uh, learners themselves. Meanwhile, Shihana has donated school uniforms to 2,000 vulnerable learners and boys as one way of addressing the problem. Shihana and his spouse, who were all dressed in Ngutwini primary school uniform, said education is the foundation of the Romaine, hence allowing learners to do piecework, to buy some school necessities, can compromise both teachers and learners' performance. You cannot do and be eloquent and be able to communicate with the international community without education. Nowadays, the challenge which is coming up is every communication relies on technology. You cannot understand and appreciate technology without having a basic education. So it is important that the basic education, especially uh, primary education, should be achieved. That is not enough because that is only at a level of sustenance at uh, understanding basic things. Jihana has also donated an ambulance that would be used to carry learners and children for free to access health services from the hospitals in the constituency. Ministry of Forestry officials have announced plans to harvest trees covering about 32.4 hectares of Zomba Mountain Forest. Director of Forestry in the Ministry, Clement Chilima, says they have arrived at the decision as one way of harvesting trees that have, um, have, that have matured in order to replace them with new ones. Chilima disclosed this recently during a press briefing held in Zomba. Our reporter, Jason Maloa, was at the briefing and has compiled this report, read by Elvis Hoahoa. Chirima says the exercise, which was expected to commence in April, delayed because they wanted to do it in a proper manner. He adds that during the exercise they will leave aside some endangered species in accordance with the law. We have agreed that uh, we will not harvest every tree. Uh, we will keep some trees standing while we are removing those that are ready for harvesting. Uh, we will replant immediately after harvesting. Uh, we will make sure that when we are harvesting trees, we are not causing damage to the undergrowth, which we want to, uh, that undergrowth to take over. Uh, and we have agreed that any soil dust that uh, accumulates from sowing, it will immediately be removed so that we don't get soil dust going into the streams. Chidem also said the replanting of the trees would start immediately after harvest. In his remarks, Southern Region Water Board Pulungusi Dam Supervisor Henderson Wanyemba said their role during the exercise is to make sure that the dam is protected. We are making sure that he, when this sowing season is starts, then he, we as Southern Region Water Board, we make sure that this sowing season, the cutting down of trees in terms of uh, how the logging should be uh, sided off and the sowing itself and also uh, looking at the uh, critical area part of it, that's the sawdust how they will be uh, managing to take out the uh, sowing so, so dust so that they not, might not get leached into the dam, uh, the dam in terms of water uh, quality. About 13.5 hectares of the forest will be restored by the Southern Region Water Board, while 9 hectares will be restored by Sunbird's Kuchawi Hotel, whereas the rest will be restored by the Minister of Forestry. The whole Zumba plantation comprises 5,164.4 hectares. And in international news, Afghan lawmakers are asking the United States to continue providing urgently needed maintenance and logistical support for their Air Force and National Armed Forces after the U.S. military completes its withdrawal in September. The White House has pledged continued support but stopped short of promising continued maintenance or drone strikes on Taliban equipment. VOA's senior diplomatic correspondent, Cindy Saini, reports. Amid ongoing violence in Afghanistan, including rockets landing near the presidential palace during prayers this week, the Taliban are calling for President Ashraf Ghani to step down as a condition for any negotiated political settlement. Asked about the comments Friday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki had this to say. 
First, the President and the Administration supports the leadership of the Afghan people, uh, including Ashraf Ghani. Uh, the President was scheduled to speak with him today, I believe, uh, and I don't believe there's a readout that's come out about that call quite yet. It may while we're speaking here. Uh, I would note that uh, there are ongoing uh, political negotiations and discussions that we certainly support between Afghan leaders, members of the Afghan uh, government and the Taliban, and we believe a political solution is the only outcome to lasting peace in Afghanistan. Uh, but we will continue to provide support to the government in the form of humanitarian support, security support, uh, training, uh, and uh, we will also continue to encourage them to take a leading role in defending and protecting their own people. Earlier this week at the Pentagon, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, gave this candid assessment of Afghanistan's uncertain future. There's a possibility of a negotiated outcome that's still out there. Uh, there's a possibility of a complete Taliban takeover or a possibility of any number of other scenarios, breakdowns, warlordism, all kinds of other scenarios that are out there. We're monitoring very closely. Uh, I don't think uh, the end game is yet written. In a Zoom call with U.S. journalists Friday that was not recorded, several leading members of the Afghan parliament urgently called on the United States to continue providing critical funding, logistical support, and maintenance help for their security forces and air force, saying one-third of their planes are grounded due to maintenance issues. They also asked for more U.S. drones to attack Taliban equipment. Afghan lawmakers said the problems would only get worse after U.S. forces depart in September. Cindy Sane, VOA News. That's the news for now, but before we go, a recap of the headlines. Distribution of the 192 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines to district hospitals across the country will start next week. This year's Independence Day celebrations chairperson says funds that were unused in organizing the event will be returned to account number one. And in other news, a Form 4 dropout called in Kosi has created a mini hydropower plant. Remember, you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page, Times360 Malawi, and following us on Twitter, at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance, and mask up. Please stay safe. You have been with me, Chawes Banda. Goodbye.